And it's a great folk art. $135. They'll be out of the depression. Yeah, exactly. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. You might recognize Mary Beth and Laura from Fat Bird Finds. There's Barb from Winking Owl Antiques. And we've got Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter and Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage. And Misty's other half, Mark. And we are at Country Lane Antiques because the show got really crowded and we'd seen a lot of it. So we decided to go see something else. And here we are. So Country Lane is a mall and they have furniture and they have smalls and they have a mix of new and old but they are mainly antiques and we're going to take a look around and see what they've got okay well i have to admit i saw her filming something so now i want to know what it was oh it looks like it's this child's lusterware set here and these are very cute and this is another thing that if you like these it's a good time to be collecting because the prices have really come down and there's some really neat sets coming out of old collections. This is 1930s Japanese luster wear here. Now I believe that this is Monmouth pottery. Whenever you see this squarish number block on the bottom, but it could be one of the other Midwestern potteries as well. There's so many little potteries that made this sort of wear in the Midwest in the early 1900s. This one is priced at 35 and I like the grape leaf pattern on it. This is a nice old oak mantle, and it's priced at 200 Here's a big piece of Hull pottery. Hull doesn't sell for the prices it used to, but there's a lot of pinks in it, and I think it's going to come back. And what's great about it is it's all very easily marked, so you can identify it's mold number 9, it's 10 and a half inches. This one's priced at 55 they used to easily sell for that price. These days, that's actually kind of top-end retail. I see a sign back here that interests me, because it looks like it's from an old hardware store. There's a Puritan rope for every purpose. So this is something that would have sat on top of a store display rack. Looks like 1950s or 60s. It's priced at 29 and you know, as hard as signs are getting to be to find and the fact that it's double-sided. I think I'll actually go ahead and buy that. It's got a good eye director. It's got an arrow. It's double-sided. Who knows? I might even find an old rack it can go with. Here is a Hager pitcher in a very 1980s color. Hager did really well in the 80s. A lot of other American companies went out of business and Hager and Treasure Craft and the other survivors at that time a lot of companies still wanted to buy American, and so a lot of the business went to those companies at that time. So Hager got to thrive and survive for another 25 or 30 years and make a lot of really neat things that people are collecting now. I always got a kick out of these little glasses. You have the swashbucklers. These are very 60s, because look at how angular the faces are, very geometric. But then you also have the space guy, and the space guy is the one that I don't run into much, and with my people in Florida, I have a feeling this might sell. It doesn't have a price, so I'm hoping and thinking it might be cheap. Misty was pointing out that for $20, this is a pretty great Victorian frame for the price. She seems very stern. This looks like a drawing, but it's actually a lithographic reproduction. You can see the dot pattern in her hair when you look closely. And so they took a picture and turned it into this. And pictures back then had very long exposures, so you could not smile, or as your smile moved a bit, it would make your mouth look really blurry and funny. And so they did not smile in their pictures back then. When I was a child, I used to think, boy, people were really miserable back then. But it turns out that, no, it was just technology wasn't advanced enough for them to show their joy. We see a lot of school desks from this era, and people wonder why. Well, there's a really good, simple explanation, and that is that education became compulsory. And so children who had never been to school suddenly had to go to school, and there was a big surge in building schools, and they needed desks. 
and so they would do these in rows like this you can see these are on the original rails and each one the table from the back is the back of the chair of the next one so that's why they always seem a little incomplete but that's how they were made we were just at the show and saw what the show price was from the dealer who brought the big stuff outside now this one's 95 and it's sold so see they got 95 retail he was selling these for 115 for a pair so it's not always true that you can't get a good deal at a show. A big thing like that is something they may not want to take home. Now here's another really good oak mantle. This is only $150. It's got the bow knots. It's from about 1900. It's American oak. The columns are in good shape. It looks like it would polish up really nicely. In the right architectural place, this would be a three dollars to $500 piece. It's a little too big for me to manage, but some dealer will come in and get a good deal on that. And then let's see how much. $100 for Walk Don't Walk. That's not bad. And only $68 on the old wall phone. I'm kind of tempted at that. Let's see if it has the guts. It's been marked down. It's got the crank. It says it's as is, though. And that is because the receiver is not all there. If you had an extra receiver, that would be a great thing it's an old Western electric. It's a fairly common one, so it would be easy to replace that if you had the part. And in the old days, if you couldn't afford a washboard, you made one. And this is a primitive one. It's really cool. You don't see these very often because washboards were pretty common and not that expensive, but somebody out in the sticks needed to make their own, and they did using wire and boards, and they just stuck it together. That is definitely different. And yes, rubbing your clothes against that would eventually get the dirt out if you didn't tear them. I see a sign over here I like for eye wash station. It's priced at 25 This gentleman has a sort of startled expression. Wow, this is something different. An old bread bowl that someone put an old metal grater in the middle so that they could grate things and then have them stay in the bowl. This is different. I don't know about that green paint. I think that might have been added later, unfortunately, because it doesn't make sense that you would put paint on a surface that you were preparing food. I see Mary Beth and Laura and Jeffrey and a lot of furniture and a bunch of Raggedy Ann's. They made a lot of Raggedy Ann collectibles in the 60s and 70s. There is a more recent generation that remembers them. There used to be a really active market for Raggedy Ann collectibles, but that generation has aged out of it a bit. And we don't see as many people interested. But I have to say the stapler seems like something somebody might enjoy. I have a friend in Seattle who is a collector, but she has an entire room full of Raggedy Ann, and I don't know whether she has that piece or not. And what a good deal on this flax wheel. Only $45 and it does appear to have all its parts. Spinning wheels are not as valuable as they used to be because they are something that heralds back to an era that a lot of people don't remember anymore, but there are new people taking up spinning. But that is just a terrific price. Even the clawfoot bathtub is pretty well priced at $150. Looks like you'd have to resurface it though. But it is enameling, so that can be done, and especially because it isn't installed, it'd be a lot easier to do before it's installed than later. Ooh, Jeffrey found some Walt Disney paint books. Those are cool. As I make a mess. <laughs> they're pretty cool. They they're, are cool. Looks like they're re, um, like reintroduced. Like oh, the I see. Special edition from the 30s, so it might be like a 70s thing. Well, I don't know if it's going to tell us. It just wants to say 1937 and 39. Right, which is the original, obviously. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet it's 70s, but they're cool. Okay, we're doing a little show and tell with Misty. She's going to show me what she bought because she got something that I don't see very often, which are the Pixies by Shawnee Pottery out of Ohio. That yep, is very cute, them. and he's touching his toes. Yeah. <laughs> this is what all those 50s Japan pixies, as Misty likes to call them, uh, were derived from. <laughs> he's very cute. That was a great price, too. Yeah, I got three of them. They're all, wow. different, all different poses. Awesome. 
Well, it's your what? weekend for pixies. It, it is. Here. I've found several. <laughs> All right, so we have made it to our next stop, which is across the street at Princeton Antique Mall. But I want to take a moment and show off this amazing building. This building is Second Empire architecture, meaning that it was done based on French architecture in the time of Napoleon III. And that was a hodgepodge of a lot of different Victorian architecture. It's everything from neoclassical to a little bit of Gothic. And of course, they've changed the windows and things to modernize it, so you may not get all of those influences by looking, but it's a pretty neat building. We'll get across the street where you can see the whole thing in one shot. And then we're far enough north that this is a monument to the Union side of the Civil War. I'm down in Kentucky where we see monuments to both sides. Old bank building. This was the Sprawl building where we're going to the Antique Mall here. And here is a better look at the courthouse. Neat old Schwinn bike. I like that it's got the baskets and the rack. That alone is worth something. If you see these loose from bikes, people who are restoring old bikes want those parts. A couple of neat metal chaise lounges from the 60s. And they are priced at $249. And then in we go. This bear still bank is a little different than what I see because you put the coin in this way. He's got good detail and he is clearly old. There's not a big gap in the seam or any big filing marks. So he's an older one. He's priced at 45. I haven't seen him before. I don't really know what they go for, but I might look into him because he's a little larger and more substantial than the typical ones like the one you see next to it. Oh, and there's one other thing in this case I'd like to look at. Okay, that's a gun oil can from the Second World War. Here is a chocolate mold for $95. It's a nice old heavy one. And you would have made little Easter Bunny chocolates out of this one. That's cute. It's priced at 95 That seems like about the right price for one as substantial as this. Here's a Buster Brown mannequin from the old shoe store. He's got the bone in his hand. He's got the shoes and the clothes. He doesn't have his little hat, though. Now, some dolls want a fancy dollhouse, but some dolls live in log cabins, apparently. This is really cool. $95. It's got plywood, but plywood is older than you think. It's been around since the 1850s. I would say this is probably done in the early 1900s. Maybe a little later, but it is a neat piece. This booth is 20% off, so I'll spend a moment shopping there. Nice to see the dinky helicopter with its original case. The Santa is neat on that sled with the wheels underneath it, so he really rolls. The paperweight with Albert Pope may be worth buying. He's $15, but it's referring to him as the founder of the manufacturer of bicycles in the United States. And a lot of these sell to people who collect a particular thing, like bicycles. So I'm going to take a look at that one. There might be room in that. There's also some nice little perfumes in here, so I'm going to see if I can get them to show me in this case. That is a shaving mug, and you notice the blacksmith tools on it. This is an occupational, meaning that William Wagner was a blacksmith. They would leave these at the barber shop, and so this was actually a way to advertise your services because your cup would be left at the barber shop with your occupational transfer on it so that people could see what you did. And then if someone said, oh, so who's the blacksmith in town? The guy would point to your cup and say, well, William Wagner, you should talk to him. Here's another neat still bank. This is Captain Kidd. It's an unusual one, and the color on it is nice. You don't see a lot of the painted ones, so we'll take a look at them as well. Oh, gee, Misty ran right by this case and missed out on a great clown. So while I'm thinking of it, 
Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. This place does have a lot of true antiques. This is a Rockingham mold. Rockingham pottery is amongst the first of the American potteries. It's this brown spatter glaze. Here's a really neat primitive piece. It's priced at $350 minus 20%. It's made of maple. And it is a very large place for grinding, as you can tell from the way it's been used over the years. Edelweiss beer. She has a bob and it was made in Chicago and flapper bobs really come in in the mid-20s during Prohibition, so this might be right after Prohibition. Boot and shoemaker sign. There's some neat things in here. And here is a concrete version of the Kutani cat I got at the show yesterday. Or is it chalkware? It's chalkware. Priced at 45 but they were patterned absolutely on the Japanese Kutani cats. I like the detail in this little cabinet with the butterflies and flowers. And let's see if we can determine how old that is. Probably right around 1910 when pyrography was, yep, pyro art. So this is a pyrography piece. It's priced at about 150, which seems right for what it is. They have some very nice things in this store. I don't know that there's going to be a lot for resellers, but they really have cool stuff that's fun to see. Console the Educated Monkey is an old toy from the 1920s. And then you've got the Tin Santa. I like this figural lamp, priced at about 95. This booth is also having a sale. Here's Cambridge Crown Tuscan. These are only about $20 each, and it's such a pretty shell pink color. It's even got a glass doorknob. These were things during the Depression that people who were broke would make to sell for money, and that's why they got the name Tramp Art, and it's a great folk art. $135, that will be out of the Depression. Yeah, exactly. That would, have, that would have given you a year's wages back then. Jeffrey and I were just talking about how it can be really annoying when you see half off and then everything is twice retail. Why don't they just price it at retail and sell it for what they really want? I mean, there's cute things here, but, you know, just ask the price you really want to get. And you will sell a lot more, I promise you. I've seen people do it both ways over the years. And dealers that price things really high and then market half off eventually, nobody wants to shop there anymore. Here's a nice piece of goofus glass that's in really good shape and it's got the apples. And that's $20. Now that is not a bad price. I have a goofus collector in Alabama who watches. Bowls in the cherry pattern as well. Those are in really good shape. They're not missing the color. And that's so important with goofus glass because it's often very worn. And this is $30 minus half. So, you know, I don't buy a lot of goofus, but I'm tempted by these. So I guess it just goes to show you after I said what I said about half off, well, you know, some of their stuff half off is a good deal. So I guess you really just have to look. This is Blinko from the 1960s. It's a great piece in the tangerine color. Blinko's tangerine tended to shade very abruptly from yellow to orange, as you can see in this piece. It's only $30, but it's missing the stopper. If you could find the stopper, it's probably worth a hundred and a half, but the stoppers were ground specifically for each piece, so even if you find one that's the right stopper, it may or may not fit. So they're kind of tough that way once they're gone. This booth is 20% off, and they've got a lot of cute swanky swigs that are going to be in the $4 range primarily, which is a perfectly fair price. Royal Copley cat playing a cello or a viola. I'm not sure how a cat learns to play. 
This one is $12.50, but he's got a bad ear, so we're not going to take him. Train here is $16. That's probably by American Bisque, looking at the way the bottom is finished. And then we have a lot of ceramics over here. The Francoma with the stand here is under $20, pretty good price. McCoy with the Ivy is going to be $22.50. This is Del Dareware by Buffalo China from about 1910. And it's going to have a nice mark on the back. 1908? 1908, yep. That's, I think, Very when they cool. came out with them. And that's 95. And, you know, there was a time they went for that. I haven't seen a piece in so long. I don't really know what they go for now. I love when pottery is dated it's nice when it has it right on it yeah <laughs> it's wonderful although sometimes it's just what they started with and and then it's like oh yeah. but it's not from 1846 but yeah they're nicely done oh i have a friend who hates monkeys so i can't wait to show him this it's chalkware and it is 22.50 which is good price you don't see this one very often maybe because other people didn't like monkeys either i had a little stuffed monkey when i was a kid so i'm partial these are Florida, back when Fort Lauderdale was quite small. The sailboat lamp is $30. The rigging is mostly okay. These are metal strands, so not so easy to fix if it doesn't actually have all of them. There's one or two that seem a little loose, but I think they could be made to look all right. Now the big question is, does it light up? Because the bottom is glass, and if it lights up, they're really cool, so let's try it. Well, Mark is very observant, so he showed me where I can plug this in, and Misty showed me these two Murano bowls, which are half price, so I'm going to get those. Out of deference to her, I'm not going to get the clown. So this is the ship lamp turned on, and the glass base is where you get your color. It's got just a little damage to this red cover on the front, which bothers me a little, but I think it could be fixed. And I think for $30 I'm going to get that. I haven't had one of these in a really long time. Yes, that is nice. $30 isn't a bad price at all either. And then in here is this Chickle Premium toy, which is Bamboo doll furniture. I had not seen this set before. I think that's very cute. It's $52, but it is from the 1930s, and I'm sure that most of it was destroyed immediately when the kid got it. Look how cool this is. This is John Alden and Priscilla, and she's saying, why don't you speak for yourself, John? This would have been done around 1910. It's very much arts and crafts and cottage style of that era. It's priced at $245, but when you see these paneled like this, they're unusual and hard to find. Some nice costume jewelry here. Here's a very pretty Eisenberg brooch and earrings for $60. That is not a bad price for vintage Eisenberg at all. This is Weiss with the mesh. Pretty cameo. This Lucite dog pin is really fun. Priced at 80, that's probably a fair retail price on that, truthfully. Older Lucite is rather desirable now. Dad's root beer can. That's fun. The Worley company that made the Moo Cow Creamer also put these in restaurants and sold them for a long time. It was a pretty good deal that they figured out to put the stuff on the tables and restaurants and then sell them through the restaurant. Tiger sold here and this is a Tiger salt and pepper shaker where it's a push button and the salt and pepper in the bottom and so it's all a one piece unit. It's cool that it's got the original sale tag on it and it's ten dollars. I'm gonna do one more scan through the half off stuff and then I better go up there because everyone else looks like they're ready to go on to another place. These are McCoy and they've got a nice mark and half of 28 is a good deal on these. I will get these for sure if there's no damage. They have some crazing but that's typical of McCoy. You want to look for cracks right there. On this piece that's a common place where they get cracked. I don't see any hairlines. 
yeah, this is coming with me. This very strange man here dates to the end of Prohibition, my bootlegger. I believe this is a German-made piece. And he's a dresser box. And he's apparently doing very well as a bootlegger. That is such a weird Prohibition era item that I'm kind of tempted by him. Donatello wall pocket, but it's got a crack at the bottom, unfortunately. Oh, and a big crack in the back, so no to that. This is a cute little Hager piece for half of $7.50. It's a good price. This one is an older Roseville floral pattern. And then this looks like it's the Cavalier by Peters and Reed, another one of the arts and crafts potteries that competed with Roseville and Weller and Owens. But that's priced at an old school price of $155, and at half it's still just barely getting into today's retail, in my opinion. So I'll leave that. Let's see what the Pyrography glove box runs for. $17.50. That seems about right. Little brass cash box here. Look at the neat shaving stand with the red vinyl and the chrome. This is right out of the 40s or 50s. It's priced at $8.75, but it is really a spectacular piece. And hey, you could probably make that much giving shoe shines. So there you go, your new career. And I see some Russell Wright down here. This bowl, I think, is a somewhat unusual piece. It's got the mark on the bottom, made for Payton City Pottery, designed by Russell Wright. Interesting memorial plaque. This is all hand carved. Au revoir, it says. 1907, it's got the horseshoe for luck, a heart for love. Something that looks like a pretzel. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. The anchor and the cross. My guess is that somebody for whom this was made was a sailor and perhaps went off on a crusade. More pretty jewelry. I like the blue. That looks like an Art Deco era piece. Russian enamel pins. We'll have to see if those are priced where we can buy. Ooh, and $35 for the wedding cake beads, and you know, I'm out of those, and they are selling for good prices now. I think I'll pick those up, even though they're short, because they do have the earrings. On the left is Eisenberg, really nice with the color. Check piece there. There's a nice Eisenberg fur clip, in fact, a whole bunch of Eisenberg. One of the great old producers of costume jewelry in this country. Well, we had some fun here. I think most of us ended up with a bag. Mary Beth and Laura buying a pile of linens. Jeffrey got a bunch of glass. Misty got some stuff. I think Barb had some Blinko candlesticks, but maybe changed her mind on those. Look at this funky, cool, handmade, homemade job with the steer horns made into a wall rack. That's pretty great. And then, of course, I love the mesh purses. It's nice to see them hung. This is how a lot of people who collect display them. And it's a nice way to do it, where you just take one off the wall when you need it. They're like art. Let's zero in on those a little more so you can see some of the detail. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!